Uh, well, I just want to, um, I just want to personally thank the people who were involved in putting all this together because there was a lot to, uh, to be done. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Pachemkin and the staff at the Soviet Embassy in Washington, the Soviet Ministry of Culture, Goss Concerts, Goss Teller Radio, the U.S. Information Agency and Ambassador Ryan Smith, the American Embassy in Moscow, Michael Collier, Robert Dalrymple, Jim Hickman, Ted Levin, the Citizen Exchange Council, the people at Frank Management, Jensen Communications, and uh, some of the guys in my own production crew who actually went over before to do some advance work, and Poseidon Films. Uh, now we can go to question and answers, I guess. Yes. Yes, uh, Mr. Joel, uh, uh, the Secretary of State, uh, State Richard Schechter, was recently in the Soviet Union and came back and said that you know, the situation for Soviet Jews has not improved quantifiably. And you have people like uh, Vladimir Slaypak, who's been helped for 20 years, who again was recently rejected. Are you going to raise this issue over there? And are you uh, at all concerned that your um, triple will be used by the Soviets to whitewash the human rights situation? Well. <laughs> I, this is an important issue, and I have my own opinions on it. I'm not a politician, and I don't think me not going there is going to help the situation. I'm going there as a musician. Uh, I want to get more communication going between us. Uh, I know that um, people over there like pop music. They like rock and roll. Uh, I think this kind of communication can only help things. Uh, and I'm not an expert. And I'm, again, I'm not a politician. Uh, what I'm addressing now is this tour I'm going to do. And uh, I'm sure I'll find out more about all kinds of situations when I'm there. Will you have a chance to dialogue with the people beyond the security on stage? Yes, I intend to just do a lot of walking around and a lot of hanging out. Uh, we've, uh, we've a lot of time for me to be able to do that. Yes. Uh, from what I understand, there were, there were, you know, little sticking points now and then, but because of the desire on their part and our desire, once we had that, there really wasn't that much of a problem. It was, uh, there were a few things like uh, decibel levels. When we play, it's, it's loud. It's very, very loud. And because I don't think they've had that kind of production of a, of a rock and roll show, um, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have any limitations on how loud it could get. Um, and just certain other little sticking points like that, we've been able to overcome all of those. Well, as you know, the uh, Soviets have some of their own very good rock groups. Uh, do you anticipate playing, jamming, if you will, or uh, getting together with anything? We'd like to. Um, you know, even when we're out on tour in the States and we like to go and, and jam, um, Sometimes it turns into a zoo. The, the best times to do this is like late at night. Uh, and don't take this personally. When there's not a lot of press around. Uh, <laughs> when it's just kind of loose. And uh, I mean, I, I'm a piano player. I also like to play Hammond B3. And I, I hope somebody's got a Hammond in one of these places because I just love to play and not even sing. I mean, just sit in and play. And we want to do that. We do want to do that very much. You know, I actually, I think I started thinking about this when we did Cuba. I think this was back in 79. And uh, Columbia Records made it possible for us to go down and play in Cuba. The response was great. And the people there were, were very different than what I'd been, you know, uh, taught all, all my life. And they just loved the music. And they, uh, we got along great using that as a, as a language. And I started thinking about it and reading a lot more about the Soviet Union right after that. I'm going to go to Anthony here. Yeah. Uh, Billy, uh, I know that at, at one point you were concerned about who was going to be able to go to see your shows in the Soviet Union, right. what kind of access the public was going to have. What sort of steps have you taken about that in the right of the tour? That was one of the prerequisites of the tour, that we wanted to um, get an equitable ticket distribution. Just like we do in the States, we try not to let the scalpers get them, but they get them anyway. Uh, and when you play in L.A., half the audience is in the music business. So, you know, no matter what you set up... Um, Something always happens. But what we, one of the decisions we made on the size of the venues, because the venues are pretty big, um, some 20,000 seats. Rick would know. Uh, 20,000 seats. The, was that the Moscow one? 
the uh, Moscow building is uh, actually uh, 35,000 seats. But we're cutting it down. Right. And right. Uh, Leningrad is 20,000. Right. This, the size alone meant that um, it wasn't just going to be people who had, you know, closer access to tickets. There will be some uh, groups, and when I understand there are certain groups, like, and I got a note about it here, it's one of these pockets. It's over 100,000 people. And... There is something like the Union of Composers and the Writers' Union and the Artists' Union. They're like first in line to get tickets. But there will also be tickets distributed for the general public at kiosks on a first-come, first-served basis. And hopefully that'll mean younger people because older people don't want to stand out in, in the cold. And Well, it won't be cold, but they don't want to hang out overnight and camp out. Usually it's the crazier younger kids that want to do that. And I, I think that'll guarantee a, a, a pretty equally... Uh, represented audience. Bill, how was your experience at the Savannah Jam in 1979? Well, the, when we played in Havana, the theater was the, the Karl Marx Theater, and it was actually a lot better than some of the theaters we've been playing with in the States. The facilities were pretty nice. Um, and uh, the audience really was just like a, like almost like a college audience you'd, you'd run into in the States. A lot of artists went on before and they made this big speech, you know, Viva the Revolution, ba 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 and the kids are sitting there like, oh, we hear this all the time. Uh, and we, I went on and I said, you know, hablo espanol, and, and played Big Shot, and then they stormed the stage. <laughs> and I think what a lot of kids just want to do is rock and roll and have a good time. And uh, there wasn't that much of a difference between them and, and as I said, a, a college audience. The, you know, there's, we have a lot more in common than we know. Yes. Definitely. Uh, you know, some of the guys in my production crew went over to do some advance work to look at the different venues and see how we're going to set it up. And my lighting designer, Steve Cohen, made these videos. And there was a heavy metal concert going on. I think was that in, uh, Leningrad. in Leningrad. And there were these kids watching the stage, and this band was wailing away. And these kids were playing air guitar. Now air guitar is, you know, just like that. And it, it, all around the states, you go to these rock clubs, and kids are doing the same thing. And, and my heart really went out to this nameless kid I saw playing air guitar, doing the same thing. And I think if more people knew here how people respond when they hear pop music. Uh, our countries could be a lot closer together, sure. Uh, do I know Russian music? I don't, I'm not that familiar with contemporary uh, Russian uh, rock and roll and pop. I've heard some records. Uh, I'm mostly familiar with the, uh, the classical Russian composers and, um, you know, the, the, the famous, famous names. How much money do you expect to make on this tour? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> None. Yeah. There's, it's, it's going, in, we're going into the red. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, fortunately, I, I can afford to do this. I, I can afford to do this. Actually, we're hoping to We're bringing a, yes, we're bringing a film crew and, and uh, recording people to document this. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with it after that. I guess we'll come back and try to market something. What is the ticket price? It's, it's Six a, rubles. Which is... of uh, ten dollars. Yes. In your opinion, how significant will your tour be in bridging the gap between U.S. and Soviet relations? I don't really know. I, I don't want to go in, you know, starry-eyed and think that I'm going to come back like Neville Chamberlain, you know, waving a piece of paper. Uh, <laughs> Like I said, I'm, I'm a musician, that's, and you know, there is, I don't really have a lot of message in my music. I think the message is music, is the music. When we play in Japan, the Japanese audience doesn't necessarily understand English, but they respond to the music, and I've always thought that was primary. I just think it's, it's opening a, a good line of communication, because rock and roll, pop music is so important here, and I really believe that it's important over there, too, and it can, I, it can only help. Yes? We're gonna. The show is gonna be basically similar to what we're doing in the states and other international countries. And I'm gonna have a a couple of pivot songs. Uh, 
You know what? Really, it's it's gonna it's gonna depend on if it works with the audience. If the audience kind of sits there and goes for that one, it's gone. We're gonna put in something else because basically it, it's a show. It's a performance, and I want it to work as a show. Um, there's no special, especially significant songs. It's what I would hope would represent my repertoire the best. Is Christy and the baby are going to go. Christy and the baby are going to go. Yeah, she's really looking forward to it. She's very excited about it. Am I? Yeah, we started to talk last week. Как поживаете? Да, да. Very good pronunciation. I like the show. I'm trying. It's um, it's tough. The guys in my road crew, are, you know, they they're not the most uh, you know serious people in the world, but they're going to have to learn too. That you know. They want to know how to order beer and stuff. But, yeah. but, I'm going to help them. But after coming back, probably you will be even able to bring some songs in Russian. I will right. be not surprised. I'll try. I'll try. The release says you're going to do a couple special things because it's a Soviet audience. Uh, can you give us some idea of what that might be? Well, I don't know how special it's going to be. We're, we're, I'm trying to figure out how to, when I speak off the cuff, maybe have that interpreted in, in a good way rather than it being just having a guy come out and go Mr. Joel said ba 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 maybe incorporating whatever the interpretation would be into the show itself as some kind of entertainment um, the different songs we would do maybe there are some songs in the show that we haven't been doing in the states that actually I don't know I think like a song like The Stranger we haven't done that in America for a while but it's in this minor key it's I don't know Sort of sounds Slavic to me. Da 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 da, ba da 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 da. Um, things like that. A, a few orchestral type of things, uh, modal things. Uh, you know. How, how well known is your music in the Soviet Union, as far as you can tell? Oh, I've been told people know of it, but I don't think we're really going to know until we see what happens at a show, of which I kind of like. Uh, letting the music stand on its own without having been too, you know, uh, promoted over there. Uh, I, I want to see. I don't know. But no plans made yet. We're going to record. Um, I, I, I don't know how crazy I'm about live albums. I mean, we put out a live album already, uh, which Columbia Records thought was a great idea. The one was with no guaranteed no hits on it. This was just going to be the, the obscure songs live. And I've also had a, like, a greatest hits a album out recently, so I, I think something like that could, would actually be redundant. Um, I don't know about Europe or something like that, but as far as a uh, special f for TV, I don't know. We're going to film. I, I want to document this whole thing. If we come out with something that's that they can, you know, use, that's that's a whole other. That's their. Are there any restrictions that you want to make with your usual live act for the Soviet audience? No, none at all. We uh, talked about that beforehand. Um, Mr. Pachenkin came to a show and. Uh, he had a scorecard, sort of like the Olympics, 8.5, 9, 9, 9. And I, he gave me a good score on all the songs. <laughs> and you know that even some kids from the embassy came to, to at this show, and they also gave to Billy Joel a very big scores, very high score. How <laughs> That's a good question. How, when did we start negotiating this? October of uh, 86. Who initiated? I went. Uh, we did. We did. Yeah. We actually, I had received a letter a number of years ago from, was it Robert Dalrymple? Robert and uh, Poseidon. And Poseidon Films asking if we would be interested in a project like this. And they kept writing us. I'm glad they did because we ended up working with them. Uh, they were a lot of the impetus to, to get this together. Will there be a translator in your performances translating your remarks into your I, I, I would like to be able to talk off the cuff rather than having things written out beforehand that somebody could uh, interpret. Uh, I like just kind of winging it and, and being spontaneous. That, and I would like to have a translator there because a lot of our show is humor and, and fun and just... If a thought pops into my head, I like getting it across, and I, it's a way of relating to an audience. And what I was saying before, I want to work that into the show somehow, where it's not just this cold translation that's actually part of the show. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, let me add to it that, uh, you know, that English language is very popular in the Soviet Union and uh, among young people, and a lot of students, uh, there are a lot of students of English there. So I believe that uh, a lot of people in your audience 
will be able to understand the words. Well, the only problem is I'm from New York, and even when I talk like that, out of state. <laughs> and, no, and, sure. In Ohio, they're going, what is he talking about? <laughs> uh, probably Russians will understand you better. Okay. <laughs> I take that? We uh, have been, we are talking with a, a number of people and are unfortunately unable to say anything about that because obviously we haven't made any conclusions uh, with regard to anybody going abroad. I think that, um, you know, Billy Joel's people uh, started early and we're serious. As, as he said, when you asked uh, what was he going to make on this tour, uh, the issue is he's not going to make anything. He's going to, in fact, uh, contribute a lot of his own time and money to make it happen. And uh, there are not that many people in the United States who are willing to do that. And I think that's uh, one reason why he's sitting here today as the first person rather than some other people. But uh, we are uh, we're in discussions with a wide range of people and we really hope that we can send uh, more in the very near future. Yeah. Well, well, we are, we are ready, of course, to discuss it and, and interested. Of course, I believe it will be the first big example which will help uh, to pave the way for other exchanges in this field. And so we are ready to listen to your proposals. And yes, sir. Right. We are very happy to present them, sir. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious to know if you're going to have an opening act. We talked about that. Uh, the problem is... Uh, I, I don't know, one of my 12 albums, 13 albums worth of material, trying to cram that into one show. Um, it, it works out to be about two and a half hours. And an opening act really doesn't help that situation. It's, it's a pretty long show as it is. We thought about maybe having um, one of the Soviet bands open up, but then the road crew starts grumbling. Oh, we got to move equipment and amps and cables and... Uh, you know, in the spirit of international goodwill, it would work, but for my road crew, it would be a disaster. Because <laughs> they don't want anybody else on that stage. And Excuse me? No, no, I'll be dancing, but, uh, but not bare. I'll be dressed. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, what I would like to see happen is, is more exchange of, um, of music. Uh, we're not aware of, of a lot of the uh, contemporary Soviet music. We don't know about their bands that much. Um, and they haven't seen too many of ours. I'd like to, to start opening up a pipeline where these bands start you know, going back and forth and uh, we see what their stuff is like, they see what our stuff is like. There's a lot of good bands. I mean, I don't necessarily rep represent the cutting edge nowadays. Uh, I'm, you know, uh, I'm a, what, what they would call a mainstream artist, but maybe this is a good way to start the ball rolling. Joe, you know? do you feel any sense of excitement uh, about playing some of the songs that you are going to be considered uniquely American, like the American Showdown and uh, the New York State Mind of the Soviet audiences, like absolutely loving everything in the action? Uh, well, New York State of Mind is, we might do. I'm not going to do the other one you mentioned. To me, it's, it's it's not so much what the, the lyric content is, what I'm going to sing. It's the music itself. I, f I feel, um, I've you know, I come from a tradition of, of, of R&B and, uh, um, and rock and roll piano playing and soul music. And even the Beatles, which was a British group, had a big influence on, on Western music in general. Uh, I'm just excited to play pretty much all the different kinds of songs I've written. Yeah, wait. Why are you scaling down the venue in Moscow? It's obviously enough demand for 35,000. That's a good question. Um, there is a problem because of seating. Uh, we would have to bring seats. See, these venues, they don't have a lot of rock and roll shows in these big arenas. And it's mostly been sports, um, sports events. And we're used to having you know, seats stacked backstage somewhere, whether it's at the Garden or the Spectrum in Philly. And they had asked us, well, if we wanted to do the whole room, could you bring chairs with you? <laughs> right? That's, I mean, that's what happened. Yeah. And we, we didn't want to start bringing chairs. And also, 30, 35,000 people, it's a big venue. 
it's, it, that's almost too much. Uh, we'd like to scale it down to, to the size that we're used to scale it down to 20,000, right? We're, we're scaling it down to 20,000. But that's the, the size of the audience we're used to working with anyway, so it wouldn't be that drastic a change for us. Uh, yeah. How does the rest of the band feel about going? You know, at first they were mumbling and grumbling. Uh, Oh, the, oh, you, because we added on, the tour was only going to be X amount of time, and we kept adding dates, and then we were going to go to Europe, and, uh, uh, and we said, oh, what's it going to be like, and uh, how's the food, and, you know, because all the band cares about is food, really. <laughs> and uh, then uh, a couple of our people went, and they, you know, and came back very enthusiastic about all the people they met and all the experiences they had, and... Our, like a couple of people from our own production crew went, came back with videos and said what a great time they had. Now everyone is very, very enthusiastic and looking forward to it. Especially since we agreed on the, the, the salaries are okay with them, right? Yeah. Uh, Billy, yeah. What kind of things are you interested in doing you know, during your personal time in the Soviet Union? Where do you want to go? Do you have any specific things in mind? You know what? I'd like to be just kind of a cornball tourist to an extent and look around. I've read a lot about Soviet... Um, uh, history and Russian history and about especially about the two cities we're going to be in and I just like to go look at things that's just like a tourist and take my wife and child and uh, take a lot of photos and do all those corny things you do when you're a tourist um, how many days is it all together was it like two something weeks it's almost two weeks about two weeks just do walk arounds uh, if I run into some, some people, if I get recognized, that'll be interesting to deal with. I may not get recognized at all, and that'll be interesting to deal with, too. <laughs> uh, and to, to go to clubs, uh, just do all the things, I guess, that somebody my age and, uh, who does what I do would do. You know? Do you have any plans when you get back to relay your experiences with young people in the state? Well, when, that's the end of this tour, when, when I'm finished. Uh, I intend, after we play the Soviet Union, to go off the radar screen and, like, be non-famous for a while. If I, you know, just go away. So, I'm probably going to talk about it, though, to a couple of different people, some journalists, maybe, uh, just to, to know how I feel, you know, I'd like to, to talk about it somehow, but I'm, I'm not going to be doing concerts after that for a while. What about writing about it? It's, it's good material. Yeah, uh, it would, would be good to be able to incorporate that into a song. I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I'll know afterwards how, how I'm going to deal with it. Do you, do you Wait, uh, yeah. Why? Well, it's uh, it's a big uh, day for workers, and uh, I'm going to go over there and work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Matter of fact, I got I got They get off today. I got to work tonight at the Maryland. <laughs> so uh, I just thought it was a. You know, it, everything kind of came together very recently. Um, we're just about at the end of our American tour. It's it's spring and it's May Day. It just seemed like a good time to do it. Oh wait, wait, sorry. am I? I don't think so. I, we don't have a distribution deal. Uh, Columbia Records and Melodia. They're uh, bootlegged. It's like here. Just saying. Have there been discussions with Melodia to release your records over there? Yes. Yeah, I believe there have been. Uh, that's still in uh, discussion. Yes. It would be nice to be able to get that going. They're tough negotiators. We're working on it. Yes. What makes it unique for us? Yeah. Number one, it's a place we've never been before. Um, you know, we have the opportunity to bring our whole show there, uh, not something cut down, which we have to do a lot of times when we do international shows. You've got to kind of skimp on equipment. Uh, you've got to cut down on your on your stage crew. Um, uh, the stage isn't as nice. The setup isn't as nice. We're going to be able to bring the whole thing lock, stock, and barrel exactly the way we do it in the States over there. Uh, and it's not even because it's the Soviet Union, just because to be able to do that in another country, that's, that's great. I, lo I love that idea. Um, 
And also because, you know, I, I've said at the end of some of the shows in the States, you know, we're going we're gonna to be leaving the States. This is one of our last shows in the States, and uh, we're going to be going overseas. We're going to Australia, yay. We're going to Japan, yay. And we, we're trying to go to the Soviet Union. And, and sometimes the audience goes, ah. And I say, hey, listen, you know, those kids like rock and roll too. And then the audience goes, yay. And just the fact that you say something like that makes, seems to have make a difference, even to the people, I just say that too. I'm excited about that. Billy, do you think crowd control would be a problem? Why not? It's a, it's a problem everywhere. Uh, um, I mean, we're not a heavy metal band, you know? Let's face it. I'm not ACDC, I'm not Judas Priest, they're not going to be wrecking the place. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, what we, the worst we get is like underwear. You know? <laughs> and a couple of jumpers on stage, which I hope happens. Uh, but y you, want, you want a certain amount of rowdies. You know, uh, I, ho I hope that happens. I, but I don't know. Then again, it's an audience we haven't played for yet. But uh, I know from the stories I've heard about uh, how audiences are in Russia, how, they're very warm and they love music. Uh, there's a story about. When Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings was played in the Soviet Union for the first time, the Adagio for Strings is the music they use in Elephant Man and Platoon. And it builds up and it builds up. First time I heard it, I just burst out crying. It just blew me away. And the Soviet audience, when they heard that for the first time, made them encore that piece, I think, three or four times, again and again and again. And when I heard that story, I said, yeah, these people got some soul. And that's all you need to be a good audience. You know? okay. Next question will be the last sure question. Russians are very emotional people. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that your relationship with music writers in the Soviet Union is going to be uh, any less tempestuous than some of the things that have happened in the U.S.? <laughs> I don't, that's another thing I don't know. I don't know. I mean... Uh, are you going to be doing press there and interviews? Oh, yeah, definitely. We've started to do some already. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be some press from the States and Western Europe over there during this, and they'll probably get me into trouble, you know, so, uh, sure, uh, that'll probably happen. I mean, a good critique and, and a good you know, group of journalists should have some flack going. It's healthy. That's it. That's it. Okay, thank you.